Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Today we'll be hearing from two restaurateurs who will share their current financial state of their businesses and why the Hawaii Restaurant Card Business Holiday Card is so important to their business, especially for the next six months. First, I would like to introduce Hawaii Restaurant Association's Executive Assistant, Siobhan Garcia. Hey, Siobhan. Hi, Cheryl, thank you. Yes, I wanted to um, introduce our two guests today. We have Mike Palmer, who is the managing partner of Ho'okipa Partners, better known as the Kuhio Avenue Food Hall in the International Marketplace. And Michael Skidelsky, who is the Director of Operations for Eggs and Things Hawaii. Welcome to both of you. Aloha. Good afternoon. Thank you, Siobhan. To our, to our viewers, in 2020, the state of Hawaii launched the Hawaii Restaurant Card Program, which infused more than $75 million into Hawaii's restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. Today, thousands of restaurants remain in survival mode, and they need your support. Once again, as they struggle with reduced foot traffic, supply chain issues, and employee shortages to help promote, to help promote and provide immediate financial assistance to our restaurant industry and the whole food supply chain, the Hawaii Restaurant Association and American Savings Bank is promoting and launching the Hawaii Restaurant Card Holiday Business Card Program. Um, this is a way to give back and support local eateries during the holidays. The cards are available to purchase by businesses and entities to use as employee holiday gifts, client appreciation awards, and just in general to use if you're taking people out, like your employees out for their Christmas breakfast. This is a great opportunity for businesses to step up and support local restaurants while rewarding their employees and thanking the clients during this holiday season. Now, the Hawaii Restaurant Association sent out a survey and I wanted to give our viewers some background. This was the impact of the Delta variant. And the survey was taken from October 21st to October 26th and the results were worse than the Restaurant Association expected. Mm -hmm. Out of 192 survey responses from restaurant owners that collectively of course, own hundreds of different restaurant locations. In September and October, 80% of the restaurant survey saw a revenue drop by 30% or more. 37 have lost over half of their revenue. At the beginning of September, only 60% of the restaurant owners expected, 60% of the restaurant owners expected to lose over 30% of their revenue. The main factor is um, the sale, the main factor in reduced sales in all the restaurant is lower foot traffic, which includes less visitors to the islands and people in general just staying home because of the ongoing health crisis. Our visitor arrivals dropped 27% in September compared to July. So the Hawaii restaurant card will really help our Hawaii restaurants, our whole food chain distribution supply chain and farmers. And we're asking our communities kukua and to please purchase a Hawaii restaurant card. So I'm gonna first start off with Mike Palmer. Hey Mike, share a little yep. bit about the history of Kohio Avenue Food Hall. When did you open your concept? And how was the month of October 20, 2021 for your food hall? Um, thank you, thanks again for having me. Um, yeah, we, we opened in April 1st. It was formerly known as the Street Food Hall by Michael Mina. Mm -hmm. And um, it actually stayed open throughout COVID um, and did the best it could from using takeout, delivery, and just relying on local business. Because as we all know, Waikiki was a ghost town. We're right smack in the middle of Waikiki, the international marketplace. So normally, a absolutely gangbusters location to have, but nobody was immune. And uh, unfortunately, as a result of other factors, but primarily the, the, ep the epidemic, the pandemic, uh, you know, they had to shut down 
And uh, my business partner and I, uh, with Ho'okipa Partners, we had an opportunity to take it over, rebrand it, and reopen it, which might sound crazy in the midst of a pandemic, but um, it was an opportunity we, we saw and we're optimistic about the future. So we reopened, hired back um, about 15 of our original employees and opened on April 1st with the intent of opening slowly as things came back. Of course, we thought that would have been months ago. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, um, you know, things did pick up in summer. As we all know, we had an actually pretty good summer um, by Hawaii standards. A lot of mainland tourists were coming. They were spending money in restaurants and a lot of restaurants were understaffed, but we ended up building our staff up to 50 people. Um, we had initially had to lay off 150 when we closed down. So that's the number we're looking at when you think of economic impact, opening back up, you know, I, I will need to hire 50 to 100 more employees when things are in full swing. And I can't wait to do that. Now, come Labor Day, um, after the Delta variant and, the, you know, tourists being told, please don't come to Hawaii, uh, things hit us hard. And we saw 40% dip after Labor Day from the whole uh, summer numbers we were having. And had to cut hours of employees, which uh, was tough because they had all been on unemployment and then their benefits were running out. And, you know, the, as you know, the economic impact of that isn't great, but our goal throughout this has to not been to not lay any employees off because we know how hard that is. So even though we're losing money on most days, we're staying open to try to at least keep our 50 current workers employed. Um, and being optimistic about restrictions loosening and tourism coming back hopefully sooner than later. But yes, so uh, not much change since Labor Day. It's been 40% down and um, haven't seen much change. It's been kind of a flat line. And as you all know, normally there is a, a dip, the shoulder season mm -hmm. in Hawaii, but we have the international guests to fill that in. So you don't see a 40% dip. You see a five to 10% dip yeah. from summer numbers. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm being optimistic that December is great. It's usually the third or fourth busiest month in uh, Waikiki. And uh, this restaurant card will be a huge help, I think, to stimulating the economy and helping not only employees, but just the economy in general in bouncing back. Thank you so much. You know, I always say, Mike, I always say restaurateurs are entrepreneurs opening up during a pandemic in <laughs> April, knowing what we went through, and he still <laughs> opens his doors. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Michael, share with us and the viewers the history of eggs and things, how many locations, and how was October 2021 for your restaurant? Yeah, yeah, Eggs and Things as a company has been around since 1974. Um, it's a few years before I was born. But, um, they, uh, you know, it was a husband and wife team. They had one location in Waikiki. They all actually had a uh, location in Kaneohe for a little while. Um, but in 2008, a new group of people took it over. The husband and wife, or well, the wife retired, sold it to them. That's exactly when I came on in 2008. And we just had no locations. Actually, we reopened on Saratoga Road in Waikiki. And about a two years later, we opened another one in Waikiki. And then right now we have four on Oahu, um, including one in Koalina. That's our latest one. And we have one in Guam as well. Um, yeah, but so, you know, things were really good. I mean, like Mike mentioned, we, un we understand and we prepare for the seasonal dip, especially in the tourist areas. Um, but we just went through our numbers for September, October, clearly, like looking at everything, labor, cost of goods and everything. And um, yeah, maybe our sales didn't drop quite as drastically as a lot of the people surveyed, but there was a significant drop. Um, very difficult for all of our, most of our locations to stay in the black. Um, and one thing like I noticed that, um, and Mike, you understand like as an operator, like there's a basic amount of people you need <laughs> to open and so like labor in October was extremely high and you know like you don't get a discount on rent if your base rent at least when things are slower so um 
you know, once the gross sales drop, it kind of makes everything, all the problems exasperated a little bit. So um, we saw that both in September, October. But yeah, right now in November, we're seeing a little bit of an uptick. I actually spoke to a couple of customers just this past weekend, and they were saying that they held off when Ige told them to stay away, mostly because they weren't sure what would be open or closed. And so now they're coming back. They kind of just delayed their trip. So we're hoping, like Mike said, that during the holidays, we get a bigger bump. And hopefully maybe some restrictions are eased a little as well. So um, a combination of that with the restaurant card, we're expecting a pretty good holiday season. I think our workers could use that. Yeah. That's awesome. And Mike <clears throat> Palmer, you know, the Hawaii restaurant card infused 1.5 million into our local Hawaii restaurant economy back in 2020, this year. The goal is to infuse 2.5 million into the much needed food supply chain. So could you share with us some of the partners that Coheo, food, Coheo Avenue Food Hall financially supports? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, and we, I, I hope we hit that bogey that you just threw out there, 2.5. <laughs> That would be amazing that we would take it because the last restaurant card had a great impact. We saw a lot of locals using it and coming mm -hmm. in and um, it was a great program. We were all for it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't mention before. Uh, so the Kuhio Avenue Food Hall, we're actually 10 concepts. We own all of uh, different foods from Mexican to pizza to burgers to Greek to ramen. Uh, so as a result of the way the economy is, we haven't fully opened everything because uh, like Michael said, you got to have employees to staff every single concept mm -hmm. and chefs to cook for every concept. So to open everything up when the tourism is where it's at now, uh, we we go under real quick. So we've been feathering the gas pedal, as I say, to get us back. Uh, but Cheryl, as you were saying, the impact of that spending into all the restaurants in Hawaii has a very far reaching impact. I think sometimes people don't realize with restaurants employing more than 15% of the population in the state, yeah. that's a huge number. I mean, you know, the only people up there, you know, the government, I think the military and mm -hmm. restaurants and hospitality. So yeah. it's such a huge far reaching impact. So obviously the business owners, uh, the landlords, um, getting paid on time and the employees, of course, that is the biggest impact, I think. But a lot of people don't think about the vendors. You know, our vendors are all struggling. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our distributors, they, they rely on us as their customer. And when our business is hurting, theirs is hurting as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's very far reaching. It, it, there's so many industries and impacts, our maintenance. You know, I'm sure Michael can relate. You know, even our routine uh, preventative maintenance we do in our restaurant yeah. with all of our equipment. We've had to get smart and, and even, you know, it's just like your house. Sometimes you let things go because you can't afford it. And uh, it's the same for restaurants. You let certain things go because you have to choose now what I'm going to fix. And, and Cheryl, you can relate to this too, right? It's, it's, <laughs> you dread it when a major piece of equipment goes down because it's not cheap uh, to fix it. You got a compressor to replace and the labor but those vendors rely on us. So again, this, this restaurant um, gift card uh, is, is a great idea. And I think everybody you know, could really help the restaurant industry and the economy as a whole by using it and, and buying it for employees as rewards, as bonuses, uh, because it has a really far reaching impact. It's not just going into the pockets of the restaurant owners. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Siobhan if you have any questions for the gentleman. Uh, yes, I. both my questions will be geared to both of you, but um, we'll start with um, Michael Skedelski, Skedelski, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, the survey and, um, you know, how would you say um, you related most to what the survey came out with, um, you know, in terms of what you would have answered uh, should you have taken this survey? Yeah, I think like everybody, we saw a pretty strong summer and that maybe caused us to hire a lot of people. And then, you know, seeing the drop off happen that quickly, 
Um, and, and I think it was just like a number of factors that happened at that same time, right? Like we had <clears throat> the numbers high. So I think a lot of locals were um, afraid to go out, dying out. And then, you know, safe access started and a couple of other things, I think, added to that. So I think we saw bottom line get hit. Um, like Mike mentioned, we have to reduce hours. Um, yeah, so I, I, get, I can relate. When I saw those numbers, I was a little shocked it was that high. And, um, you know, especially the one was like 37% or 50% or more. But I heard that from our vendors too, because, you know, um, some of them were like, well, you guys should hear like, you know, people used to order three times a week. They're ordering once every two weeks now. And so, you know, the distributors and the vendors, they can see it probably a lot quicker than even we can. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, uh, it's hard to hear, you know, that we mm -hmm. have this big of a dip, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's, uh, I guess it's, this restaurant card is welcome news at really great time. So we're all really looking forward to it. Um, Mike Palmer, mm -hmm. you know, you touched on it a little bit too, as well, as far as um, how you're able to relate to that survey. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit more of um, in what way? Yes, uh, I think it, the the reminder we have when we get a survey like that is that we're we're not alone. We're in this together, um, and and not even just the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, and every industry is is impacted by what's been going on, uh, and and we have to come together and and get through this. You know, there is there is light at the end of the tunnel, and I think staying positive is uh, important, but. It really was striking to me when I look at those those numbers and see, even though I always knew it, what, I wasn't alone. You know, sometimes you mm -hmm. can say, "Oh, well, in Waikiki it's different than you know outside," but it isn't. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, Cheryl and and Michael both you know have restaurants outside of Waikiki mm -hmm. and they're equally mm -hmm. impacted. And I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, people's dining habits change, their habits in general change. Um, as a result of what's going on, and more so in Hawaii, I think, than anywhere else, because of the restrictions are so strict, which, uh, I mean, thank God we we had such low numbers for the most of it, And um, but I think, you know, it's time to open up. Um, we've got the best vaccination rate in the nation. Good job, everybody. <laughs> and uh, our employees are safe and vaccinated, so I think it's, it's a very safe environment now, and uh, but again, it's the reminder of the survey was, wow, it's really hurting so many people in Hawaii and so many business owners, so many employees, so many vendors that are experiencing the exact same thing. And the ones that are still open, it's, it's amazing because I, I know what I'm going through and I, I can't imagine looking at, you know, financial statements and, and, the, and what's going on with you know other restaurants because it's just it's it's mind-boggling if, if people knew you know when mm -hmm. i tell people we lose money every day we're open you know five days a week you know and make money maybe on two of them uh they don't they don't understand how that's possible but you know the, the profit margins are so slim in this industry it's a wonder why anybody gets into it uh but it's it's more of a passion and a love for serving guests and having a great experience around great food and um, I think that's what drives us all that we know we're going to get back there. And uh, but it is it is nice to know you're not alone and that, you know, we're in it together. And I think the survey was just a, a huge reminder of that when you saw the responses of everybody. And it's heartbreaking, too, you know. Yeah, com completely agree. It, it was very eye opening. I don't think um, people realized what a dip in sales and everything that every restaurant experienced. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's, I think it was good for the public to kind of hear a little bit too, what these numbers are and how so many factors are affecting all of our businesses around us. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, so my next question, Michael, let's kind of uh, maybe focus on some good for a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, we we did see with the previous three cards because this is now 4.0. Um, mm -hmm. So with the previous cards, we did see a lot of restaurants offering incentives. Do mm -hmm. you um, plan to do the same sort of thing that you did in the mm -hmm. past to really entice those um, card holders to come in and spend it at your restaurant? 
Yes, we do. We haven't finalized anything yet, but I, we have pitched a few ideas to ownership. And I think um, we would definitely will offer something. And I think the way we see it too is like the beauty of it is, um, you know, the people receive the card, they get to use it for takeout, dine-in. So I, I think it's very versatile in a way that, you know, even if they're unvaccinated or they don't have their negative tests or whatever, they can still do takeout. And for us, like Cheryl was mentioning, like it's really helpful to know that we try to focus on using much local products. Like we use only local eggs, local beef, and to know that trickles down towards everybody. Even our vendors strategic, we try to use more um, local companies like Waihata, Ziotani, Premium, or people who um, are invested here. Um, so to see that helps them as well. Um, hopefully, yeah, this one is as successful as the first two or three. Um, but yeah, I think it's a win-win for everybody. And also, I love the fact that even if, you know, you worry about when you give a gift card to someone, if they lose it or they don't spend it without getting that balance, at least this one, you know, goes to a good cause if it's unspent. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, Mike, would you say the same thing? You, you know, not expecting you to give us your exact details yet, but you do <laughs> plan on doing the same thing. So people come into uh, Kuhio Avenue Food Hall and spend their uh, dollars over there. Absolutely. Yes. I, I think, um, you know, that we are competing for the same uh, pool of, of guests and customers. Uh, but again, there's plenty, plenty of love to go around, as I like to say, but we certainly want to give people incentive to choose us to come. And especially in Waikiki, a lot of locals um, tend to avoid it. You know, you hear how people mm -hmm. say, oh, I stay away from Waikiki, but I'll mm -hmm. tell anybody who's out there is listening, this is the best time to be in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. You'll never see it like this again. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's uh, way less foot traffic. Um, and I took my son to the, see the U.S., the Mighty Mo last uh, weekend, and I couldn't believe how empty it was. And it was, I was sad yeah. for the volunteers and, and uh, the nonprofit, but, uh, you know, at the same time, I'm like, wow, when could you ever be on the mighty Mo with, you know, a handful of people on it? Never, yeah. you know, but uh, yes, we will absolutely offer some uh, incentive. Uh, and, um, you know, why, why wouldn't we, you know, we want to get people to use that and get out and enjoy restaurants in Hawaii and, and the entire experience. Well, that's that's great to hear. You know, it it makes their dollar stretch that much further. So yeah, that's uh, everybody go eat at uh, Kuhio Avenue Food Hall and uh, eggs and things. <laughs> uh, well, and thank Yukaku. you, Yeah, yeah, Yukaku. <laughs> <And> Rainbow <laughs> driving. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget those. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, I want to thank you both. I, I know our time's not done, but I did want to say thank you. Um, I also want to say a big thank you to American Savings Bank and yeah. also the Chamber. Um, we're all kind of in this program together, and we're really grateful that they have continued with this initiative. As we've heard, it sounds like it's going to do amazing things um, as it did in the past. So thank you to everyone for supporting the restaurants and the food service industry. Back to you, Cheryl. Thank you, Siobhan. So we were talking prior to jumping on live and we talked about who can actually buy the card and why, and it's really due to the bank regulations. So businesses, organizations, and entities, because you have your tax ID numbers, may purchase the Hawaii restaurant card business holiday card. So we're hoping that every restaurant, every distributor, every business, every organization, entity, you know, purchases the cards for holiday gifts for their employees or their clients, and maybe, you know, buy a couple extra as you take people out for the holidays, you can use it yourself. And perhaps, you know, in employee incentives, the first quarter sales, they can use it because the card does not expire until the end of June. 2022. So you have six months to use the card. So I was going to ask Michael and Mike, you know, let's start with Michael first, you know, as a business owner myself, I'm always taking clients out and I have employees, I have business partners, you know, we want to encourage them to go to eggs and things, right, and take people out and I didn't even realize, and that's my fault, because your eggs and things at Alamoana is where I go, that they even have alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so you can put alcohol and tips and, and the whole, you know, the tips and tax, everything can go on this because it's a pure debit card. So right. let's think of 
different people and different organizations that could use it as incentives and gifts. Is, do you have any other ideas? Yeah, I think we've already thought about, you know, pre-pandemic, we would always have employee of the month, employee of the quarter per location. So these would be great to have for that. Um, of course, you'd have to try to give it out by April or something. Yeah. We have enough time to use it. Um, yeah, and there's probably a few vendors who really took care of us who actually like really were understanding throughout the pandemic, like some of our social media people, they really like, they're like, hey, don't pay us for six months. We understand we're just going to keep doing it. And um, things like that, I think would just be a good thank you. Um, holiday gifts as well. But yeah, I think for us, we definitely would like to try to use it to get back to having that employee of the month, employee of the quarter, and just a good thing to have, especially for thank you for some employees who are extremely dedicated, like our management team throughout um, COVID. I think those who are salary, who worked through the whole thing are probably like, wish they had that little time off that some people had. Uh, Cause yeah, when we talk to them now, they're like, man, it was a different pandemic for us who worked throughout the whole thing. It's the people who were off, even our employees. So uh, I think it would be a good thank you for them as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And I just got the two minute warning from um, Eric. So I'm going to have to wrap this up. But I also wanted to remind people that it doesn't expire until the end of June 2022. So if you have a birthday, let's say a person's birthday is in January, February, March, it's a great birthday gift. There's graduations. A lot of people graduate during December from the universities. It's a great graduation gift. So I just want to remind everybody that the Hawaii restaurant business holiday card. Right now you can purchase them. And if you purchase them by November 26, you will receive delivery by December 10th. You have to order them um, through the asbhawaii.com forward slash HRC. So asbhawaii.com forward slash HRC, or email me at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. Um, the denominations are $25, $50, and $100. No minimum order, no maximum order. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the expiration of these cards is June 30th, 2022. So as you heard today um, to our viewers from two restaurateurs, restaurants mm -hmm. are still struggling. And we need your community support. Please, if you're able to support the Hawaii restaurants and the Hawaii food service industry by purchasing a Hawaii restaurant card, business holiday card, any support would be appreciated. And again, the Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. And we look forward to dining together again. Thank you. Mahalo.